of some common functions. I hope you know how the graph of sine function looks. Again, you need to know what the graph of cos x function is. Then again, tan x. Similar, you will have cos x, x, sec x, cot x. Then you have like y equals to 8 to the power x, y equals to log 8 to the power x. You should be able to draw the graphs of these functions. The my main focus is to, to draw the graph of y equals to let's say box of x. Okay. You know box of x is always an integer. So if I take any value between 0 and 1, the box of that function is 0 itself. So from this interval, if I take any value, y is always 0. If I take 1 to 2, the box is again 1. It's closed at this part, it's open at this part. Again from 2 to 3, it's 2. 3 to 4, it's 3. So this is how the box function continues. So what conclusion you can draw from this is, its, uh, it's domain is the set of all real numbers and its range is only integers. Okay. Now, to add to this, we can say that it's a non-periodic function. We'll see what non-periodic function is, what is a periodic function. And its nature is neither even nor odd. That again we'll study later. Okay. Similar to box function, we have something called the fractional function which we have discussed before. Now let's see how the graph of a fractional function looks. y equal to fractional function. So we have something like this. Now if I take any number between 0 and 1, you know that fractional part is equal to the fra uh, fraction itself. So the graph is like this. At this point it's 0 again. Again it's like this. Again, it's like this. It continues like this. Okay. So, again, you see that domain of the fractional part function is real numbers. You can take any value of x. Now, and the range, but the range of the fractional function lies between what? What is the range? You can see that the range always lies between 0 and 1. The value always lies between 0 and 1, including 0 excluding 1 because when you take an integer its fractional part is 0 so at this it's again 0 to 1 okay now I hope you know how the graph of absolute value function looks y equals to mod x when x is positive you know y equals to x when x is negative it's y equal to minus x so when x is negative y equals to minus x so the graph is basically like this okay so now again the domain is set of real numbers, the range is always positive, so it's 0 to infinity. Now it's again a non-periodic function, it's an even function. Let me say what an even function is, an even function is symmetrical about the y-axis. So if you take y-axis as the mirror, it's symmetrical about the y-axis. Okay. Now very important function which we haven't discussed till now is the Singham function. written as g m of x. This is an important function. This function is defined as x when x is not equal to 0 and 0 when x equals to 0. Or you can simplify this as x minus 1 when x less than 0, 0 when x equals to 0 and it's 1. You can see it's when you put a negative value that becomes a negative quantity. Okay, this is how a Singham function is defined. Now, if you draw the graph of the Singham function, the graph is at this point 0. For any value, positive value, it's 1. And for any negative value, it's minus 1. So, the domain, what's the domain of this function? The domain is again the set of all real numbers. And the range of this function is discrete values, minus 1, 0, and 1. These are the range. The only three values the single function can take. Okay, so we have discussed a bit on graphs. So now let's move on to the classification of functions.
Now, the example how classification function is done, let me give this through the example of sets. Let's say I have two sets x and y, right? Now, I have said, let's go back to the definition of function. I have said a set is a, a function is a relation between two sets such that each element of the set x, each element, please mark my words, each element of x has unique or you can say has only one image okay. that means if I take any element like this it should have an image in this and it should have only one image in this that is how a function is defined now to so if I say that I have say let's say four elements here, I have three elements here. So this is an example of a function. Also, I could have a function like this where I have again four sets, four elements. I can have three elements, but now this element has this image, this element also has the same image, and this element has a different image, right? This is also a function, this is also a function. Now, the classification is defined as one of the classifications as one one and many one. Many one. Now, this is a one one function, this is a many one function. The definition how it is done is a one one function, in one one function, each element has a unique image. In many one function, two elements can have the same image. This is how it defined. If, let's say, two or three elements in set x has the same image then it becomes a many one function if all the elements has different images then it's a one one function okay okay now the one one functions are also called injective functions mathematically if you say then it means if i have a one one function and i took take two elements from set x, let's say x1 and x2, then f of x1, which are different, x1 and x2 are different, then f of x1 should not be equal to f of x2. That's what it means. Because since x1 is not equal to x2, then x1's image and x2's image are different if it's a 1, 1 function. So, f of x1 is not equal to f of x2. Now, let's see if I'm given a question. How do I find that it's a one one function or it's a many one function. Let's see. Graphically, I can say that it's a one one function, it's a many one function by just drawing a line parallel to the y axis. Let's say I have a function like this. Okay. Now, if I draw a line parallel to the x axis, you can see that this line cuts the curve at three points this point this point so what it means is if i take three elements x1 x2 and x3 all these three elements have the same image given by this number so this it's not a one one function it's not an injective function it's a many one function but in the other case let's say i have a function like this you draw any line parallel to the x axis it cuts the curve only once. So, it's a 1-1 one, one function. So, the criteria is that if you draw any line parallel to the x-axis, it should cut the curve only once. Only once. Now, there are a, there are a few, you can say, conclusions which we can derive from this. If a function you can see is a continuously increasing or continuously decreasing function, then in that case, it's always a 1-1 one, one function. If the function has a local minima or a local maxima, then it's a many-1 function, okay? So, that was how we determine the function is 1-1 one, one or many-1 using graphs. Now, let's see how to find it mathematically. 